Hello, competency number two. Was the agreed lesson structure appropriate for the pupil's experience and ability? Now that's quite a meaty competency uh, and second on the list. So um, rightful to think like that really when the number one top competency seems to be the most important on this marking sheet. So hopefully you've watched, watched the previous video on the first competency. Um, like we say, that needs to be uh, established, that first competency. If that's right, we've got a chance then. Um, so when we look at this competency, there's three key words really there. And one word, well, two key words, but one word that doesn't need to be there, which I've, I really look at and think that's, that speaks volumes, which is the word agreed, was the agreed lesson structure. That to me says there needs to have been a conversation or needs to be a conversation agreeing a lesson structure, which you'll find a little bit later on complements another uh, area, which is in risk management which I'll deal with later. So let's talk about actually meeting that competency in terms of the pupil's experience and ability. So we'll deal with the learner first. Let's say at the, we can't take a beginner anymore because we just don't have time uh, to get everything and we need really in 45 minutes. Also, it shows less skill, if etc. People will understand that one. I can go into details if you want me to, but just for now, let's stay on point. Um, so we're dealing with a partly trained, so someone who maybe struggling a little bit with the clutch still. Um, mirrors might be there, signals sometimes okay, sometimes not. It's no the key thing. It's not consistent, and I think that's the big key word when it's partly trained. The basics aren't consistent. So for that person who we're taking, who doesn't have the consistency of someone who is trained, what we call trained, trained to me means they're ready for test. Uh, they're ready to go and pass their test and they've got consistency. They're consistently and have seen to have been consistently test standard for, for quite a few weeks. Um, for me, anyone less than that is partly trained and that's where you're meeting the, the appropriateness of the pupil's experience and ability and you're matching your level of instruction needs to come in. Um, so we know if we allow a pupil to come out of a test centre who is in this stage, so partly trained, with no help at all or no kind of agreement on how you're going to structure that lesson, are you going to say, well, at the beginning, would you like a little bit more help? So would you like a bit of full guided till you settle in? Or do you just are you just happy with a few prompts from me? That is a nice choice and it gives them a choice. It's not just, are you all right with full guided till we settle in? That's not a choice. That's just a dictating and them saying, yeah, OK, well, that's not good enough. It's got to be some kind of choice. Now, I'm just going to pause that for a minute and go into what is client centred and client led industries. Please don't go down the route of thinking this is a client led industry. It isn't. It's client centred and there's also there's obviously client led. I'll just explain the difference. So client led would be something like, let's say marketing. So we've got a client that comes along and says, I would like this, this and this to be done, this event done and those colours and this, this and this. And the company will say, yes, I can do it like this, this, there's your choices. I can do this, this and this. And they will be led by the client or a wedding planner. The couple go to them and say, I, we would like our wedding on a Saturday or a Friday or a Monday and we'd like to get married in a garden ceremony or a church wedding and we would like this, this and this and this music. You can understand the difference. That industry is led by the client. This industry is client centred and the, all that means is that we have we allow that, that pupil, we encourage that pupil to have 
to ask us questions and have some input in that lesson. But the reason why we can't allow a, the client or the pupil to lead is purely for risk management. If a pupil, if you ask a pupil what you would like to do today, not based on anything like a need and forming any kind of structure in your, their learning, they then may say to you, I want to do faster moving roads now and join some dual carriageways and maybe get onto motorways by the end of the lesson. We're now into an area of risk management because that person can't get out of the test centre without stalling, struggling with the routine to approach a basic junk junction and the steering isn't correct either. So what we would then say is, OK, well, I can understand you wanting to go faster. You might even ask them why they'd like to go faster um, and then get them to agree. Would you agree that we need to have the skills relevant to being safe before we increase our speed, such as gearing up at the correct time, gearing down without looking. Um, mirrors need to be on par and we need to be good with the basics before we go on to faster moving roads just to protect everyone in the car and everyone around us as well. So anyway, that's client-centered and client-led. So we can always guide the pupil based on their experience and ability. And only you both know that. The examiner won't know that until they see the car and the wheels moving and how that learner or whoever it is, we're talking about learner at the moment, but they won't understand that that's a wrong agreement until they see the lesson unfold. So that is down to you guys to know, is this person consistently okay with their junctions? Are they consistently okay with moving off and stopping? Is there any areas of weakness in there that we could work on? If they are absolutely fine with that, can we move them onto secondary junctions like on control crossroads or control crossroads? We pitch in the level right there. Is that where there's a little bit of struggle, but you know it's not out of their capability? That's where you're looking at the correct lesson um, topic and also you can then structure their learning. If you've chose the wrong first competence, first competence is not met, then this one won't be. Um, if, if, it's, if it's so wrong that you've chosen a subject that's way beyond their capability, you have no hope in structuring the, the lesson to meet the pupil's experience and ability because you're now having to over-instruct throughout the entire lesson because they, ha they don't have the capability of, of taking any responsibility for that type of junction or topic. So back to was the agreed lesson. So again, client centered, not client led, was the agreed lesson structure appropriate for the pupil's experience and ability. So let's move on to someone who's trained and um, we're now dealing with a trained person who's coming up to test and maybe you've decided to just randomly work on junctions, okay, which we've got to understand what types of junctions um, and is that too easy for them or can we do more complicated jun junctions as the lesson progresses? But this is where the structure comes in. So we should be looking that energy or sort of input from the instruction at the beginning is more than our instruction towards the end, if that makes sense. Sorry, I'm doing that because I'm mentally thinking of a graph. As time goes on, we're going that way, opposite to you. Um, so as time progresses, the instructions, the instructor's input should decrease and the learner's input should increase. So with that in mind, if we can structure the lesson, at the agreed lesson, they've agreed it because they know themselves whether that's the right topic for them and whether they've been struggling and whether something's happened where you actually I need to work on that. Then we can form a little structure then and say, right, well, do you want me to just give you a couple of prompts? So what I would do with someone who's trained, how are you getting out of the test centre? We've done it tons of times. 
or how are you getting out of here? We've driven out of loads of car parks, maybe not this particular one, but we have driven out of a few car parks now. Um, are you all right getting out of here? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay, but I wouldn't leave it at that. I would then ask them just before we leave, have we noticed the weather today? So it could be raining as it is today. It may not be. Conditions are good. And so we're not expecting to break any earlier than normal. Or it could be we've never actually driven out of this particular car park. Tell me what you're anticipating before you come out of here and how will that dictate your speed? And they should be giving you the correct answer by then. If they're not, which they should be, and most even right at the beginning will give them, you've then managed that risk and that structure's okay then without having to over instruct and say, right, careful, careful, off the gas, off the gas, slow down, slow down. So just stop there. So already, if we're going to that stage before we've left the test centre, we've got to think, have we matched that pupil's experience and ability and our level of instruction? Because without being able to do that properly, you can't structure a lesson. Um, anyway, so as we go through the lesson, we should be able to, if even if it goes disastrously long, wrong at the beginning, can we then step up and say, do you know what? Can I talk, can we go on to that, maybe have a bailout area? Can we go on to that quiet estate there? And I just feel your routine, you look a little bit unsettled. Talk about the pink elephants, you know, we're not used to having someone in the back. Is that making you feel a bit nervous? How is that affecting your braking? How is that affecting you moving off? Because we've got extra weight in the back. It's all stuff we can teach, but we then can structure the lesson and continue, which will meet another competency, competency adapting the lesson if it's appropriate, to then settle them in and maybe give them a bit more help than we thought we originally needed. Um, if not, if it's all gone well, which fingers crossed it does, it all goes swimmingly well like you were predicting, we pull in and we say, right, now you've settled in, what are you happy to do um, now as we approach this next, if it is roundabout you, you're looking at? Can you tell me the routine if I asked you to turn right, fourth exit, just talk me through it before we go. And then, are you happy to talk yourself through it? That to me shows that the, that the trainer is structuring the lesson with a bit of forethought and also agreeing with the pupil, which will meet more risk management later on. So that's how I would play it. Again, full license holder, we do something slightly different. It doesn't mean no input at the beginning. It doesn't mean we start with nothing. We, we're the trainers. We should be injecting some kind of structure into that lesson that we know we've planned here. We hope we've planned and we know how to adapt if it doesn't go to plan. So we should also know based on our own experience, if we have any, or knowing that person's experience. Are there, there could be a bus driver, the, been driving for 40 years, absolutely, you know, solid, never had a crash in the life or caused one. Um, what do, what would help them? We've noticed could be they've had a black box, there could be a new driver, they've been on a black box and they've been getting penalised a little bit for driving a little bit too fast. So can we start with some questions about if I ask you what the speed limit is, do we know where the speed's changed? Have we seen that speed limit? Is it appropriate speed? So we can start with some questions at the beginning and then ask them after they've settled in, can you take over now and start talking to me about what's the speed limit and what's the appropriate speed around here? Um, there's so many layers and so many different things you can do with lessons, but the main thing is you're matching it to the pupil's experience that's your level of instruction so that you can structure the lesson throughout um, to their experience and ability. I hope that helps.